I'm Alex McBratney from the University of Sydney, which is in Sydney in, in New South Wales, Australia. Uh, University of Sydney is the oldest university in, in, in Australia. I'm from the Faculty of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources. So there we are looking at Australian agriculture, food production and management of the environment together as a whole. Um, I'm really a soil scientist, but I, over the last 15 years, have done a lot of work on, on precision agriculture, uh, particularly crop management uh, on farms in Australia. So we've done a lot of work, I think, which has brought some practical benefit to Australian farmers. But we see that work as being a, a special case of something much bigger, which is uh, the application of information technology to agriculture and food production systems. Yes, I, I, I guess I, a moment ago I used the term e-agriculture, which really is, as you say, the application of information uh, technology and information science to, to agriculture and the food production system. Um, I see this as a, as a, as a very important uh, focus. Uh, I guess to the general po population, to the general public, for 20 years or more, they have been hearing about the advances with biotechnology, uh, gene, gene manipulation, and how that can... Uh, affect the food production systems, some people say positively. Uh, I guess what we're looking at here is something that people generally are less aware of, is that information technology applied to food production systems can be equally or even more beneficial uh, in that it can produce uh, clean green food with less environmental impact, they can have a, be more assured about how food is produced and potentially they can let the producers know what they think about what is being produced. Um, well, there are, there are some classic barriers uh, to adoption, obviously, but I guess to be brief, it they, the farmers uh, need the technology to be robust in the sense that it uh, has to be able to work under field conditions and work uh, 24 hours a day uh, in dusty, warm conditions. So if any technology has to be able to do that. And I think the other one, besides robustness, is um, they have to be able to see that they're going to get a return on their investment within a reasonable time period and our empirical evidence says this looks like three years or something like that. Ten years is too long a time frame. It's three years, I think, is what they're looking for. What I would say is that in Australia, uh, the the adoption of uh, several, several technologies which con constitute precision agriculture, um, tracking systems, so GPS guidance in, in, on the farm uh, for tillage and harvest operations. There is about, in Australia we have about 15,000 very large farms which produce crops. And on 70% of those, they're using this high-tech vehicle guidance system. And on about 50% uh, of these, they're using some kind of uh, variable uh, rate technology for the application of fertilizers and herbicides. So the uptake of technologies which work and which make uh, a positive impact by reducing the inputs and uh, optimizing the outputs 
uh, are well taken up by farmers. Uh, in Australia, no. no. In Australia, it's simply about, it, Australia is just looking at the world market uh, and looking for anything that makes the production of, of uh, grain, uh, particularly grain and cotton crops, uh, more efficient. So anything that makes the, the whole production process more efficient. Now, the interesting thing with this application of uh, e-technology uh, is that often the way it's made more efficient is by applying less inputs, not more inputs. And because you're applying less inputs of fertilizers and herbicides and getting the same yields or higher yields, the environmental impact is also lessened. So the, these, there is a win, what we call a win-win situation by optimizing using information technology we can uh, increase farmers' profits, but also reduce environmental impact. And this is why uh, sometimes we talk about, um, with information technology in applied to agriculture, we talk about the, the weightless economy. In other words, we can improve uh, profitability, production efficiencies, reduce environmental impacts, without any more material being used in the system. It's only information that's being added to the system. Uh, I do think that all of these technologies, when better linked together, so when we can link the technologies from that the farmers use uh, to the processor to the supermarket to the consumer back to the farmer and to government when all of these information flows about how food is being produced processed used uh, when all of that information can flow around the system then I think we will have much more efficient systems much less waste and uh, everybody will be happier <laughs>